Alright everyone, welcome back to the channel. This week we will be reviewing Artemis Fowl Book 4, Opal Deception. I know I haven't posted for the last two weeks and that is because I've been working on something really big which I will finally be reviewing at the end of this video. So if you want to find out what I've been working on, watch till the end of the video and you guys will get a very big surprise. As always, format for the book review, summary of the story, pros, cons, and then my final thoughts and ranking of the book. With all that out of the way, let's hit the intro. <laughs> So since the events of Arctic Incident after Opal got captured, Opal has been in a self-induced coma for the last year, plotting her revenge against Artemis, Root, Holly, and anyone who really had a hand in helping to take her down. So now the time is finally right for her to enact her vengeance plan, so she creates a clone of herself and does a body double switch, and now Opal is loose on the world and is about to start her revenge plot against everyone who forced her to go into the coma. So first thing in the pro section I'm going to talk about is the fact that we have the old personality of Artemis back for at least the beginning of this book. I think Colfer does a very good job capturing the original personality of Artemis, the very cold, calculating person that he was in book one, but does a very good job of blending sort of the more compassionate version of Artemis that we see during Eternity Code and during Arctic Incident. He does a very good job blending the two, and I really feel like we get a good benchmark of Artemis used to be this very self-absorbed, egotistical kid, but now he's a much more open, much more trusting person because he met Holly, because he met everyone else. Colfer does a very good job of blending the two personalities without having the original personality sort of supersede the better part of Artemis' personality. So I really do like how Colfer was able to blend the two personalities, at least for the beginning of this book, until Artemis finally reconstructs all of his memories and finally just becomes the better version of Artemis that we've grown to love over the last couple of books. Next thing I'm going to talk about in the pro section is going to be slightly spoilery, so if anyone hasn't read this book before and doesn't want to be spoiled about this next thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to leave a time code in the corners where you guys can jump to. You won't have anything spoiled for you if you want to go and finally read this book for yourselves. So if you're staying, I'm assuming you've either read the book or you don't really care about spoilers. So second thing I'm going to talk about for this pro section is Julius Root's death at the beginning of Opal Deception. So as Opal's first move in her revenge plot, she orchestrates the murder of Julius Root. And this is a crazy beginning of the book because we didn't really expect Root to die. And it's a really big shock for both us because we followed Root as he's helped out with the various Artemis Fall adventures and as well as Holly because it's more of a shock for her because as they keep making it really clear in the books, Root serves very much as a father figure to Holly and everyone in the LEP. So it's a huge shock that Colfer really capitalizes on throughout the book because the death of Julius Root really sets Holly up for her motivation to take out Opal and to put her behind bars because Opal killed Julius Root. That is a big shock for both Hong and us. So I feel like Colfer did a very excellent job at writing Julius's death as the beginning of Opal's sort of revenge plot for the book. And it's really a testament, I think, to Colfer's writing to make Julius Root's death super impactful because really, Root isn't too involved in the series. He's only in there a couple of times, but the times that he is in there are very important for both us to get to know him and for Holly because through Root, Holly sees what she can be and what she strives to be. Like, she wants to be like Julius Root. So the fact that Root is just taken away 
super suddenly is a very big shock for both Holly and everyone in the LEP and for us in general because we've again grown to like Root as a Holly's sort of father figure and I really do commend Colfer for being able to make Root's death super impactful even though Root's character isn't there inside the story a whole lot. Alright, so jumping right into the con section, we're going to talk about Opal Cowboy. Like I keep saying, Opal, I think, is kind of a weird villain as far as just this series is concerned. Because this is really the book where Opal becomes the main villain for Artemis Fowl going forward. Because in the first book, Opal wasn't involved at all, and in book two, the villains were her and Cudgeon working together. But the main sort of orchestrator for book two's takeover plot was Cudgeon, and Opal just kind of bankrolled the whole thing. So she was more of a secondary villain than anything else. And then in Eternity Code, she wasn't there at all. And then in this, she finally gets out and starts her revenge plot. But in my head, I know what Colfer's trying to go for. He's trying to make her seem super like vindictive and just out for revenge. And I get that, but I feel like if Colfer had made Cowboy like more involved in the series as a whole, in the beginning at least, in the early stages, I don't think I would be complaining about Cowboy as much as I do in general. I get what Colfer is doing, but again, I feel like the fact that she becomes such a big villain only later in the series is a problem. I think, like I keep saying, Colfer could have had Cowboy be involved very early on in a major way, then the revenge plot in this book makes more sense. If Colfer wants Cowboy to be such an important villain, Colfer should have made Cowboy more important early on. That way, when she finally does become the major villain for the end of the series, we understand why she becomes the major villain. As the series is written right now, it's fine, I can deal with it, but it's kind of a nitpicky thing. Cowboy, I think, should have been involved early on in a major way. That way, again, moving forward, when she does become the major villain for the series, we understand where she's coming from. But again, Cowboy's writing is, is good enough in the series as it is that I'm okay with what he gives us. I'm just thinking it could have been better. Alright guys, so final thoughts on the book here. Honestly, Opal Deception isn't one of my favorite Artemis Hall books. It, it's definitely on the weaker side, at least for me. Personally, I don't know about anyone else who's read the series. If you guys have opinions on this book, again, please do not be afraid to leave them in the comments. I would love to discuss this book with anyone, but at least for me, I feel like this is definitely one of the weaker Artemis Fall books. Just because I, I like the first three so much. The fourth one just kind of falls flat in some areas for me. There's something, I think, missing from Opal Deception that the first three had. I don't know what particularly it is, but Opal Deception, I think, falls flat. I mean, it's an okay book, but it's definitely not my favorite out of the Artemis Fowl series. This is definitely not my favorite Artemis Fowl book. So because of that, I'm going to give Opal Deception a 6 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching the video. Again, if you liked it, please do not forget like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you do not miss anything. As always, you guys can follow me on social media. My Instagram is Riley Murray Book Reviews, and my Twitter is Riley T. Murray. As always, I will leave links down in the description to those accounts if you want to go and follow them. So, if you guys stay to the end of the video, thank you so much. It will definitely be worth it. Here is the big announcement. For a while, I've been contemplating about starting a second YouTube channel, and very recently, I've taken the plunge and finally started my second YouTube channel. It is going to be a gaming channel called Ghost Gaming, and I will leave a link to it down in the description. Here is a little bit of footage I shot, just so you guys can see what my setup is, and if you guys want to check it out. Enjoy. Go. Right. Got that. And yes. Wait. Right. There we go. I want to 
ready to take him out with the special attack, but whatever. So, if you guys enjoyed what you saw from that footage, please do not forget to subscribe to Ghost Gaming so you can get more of that type of content. Do not worry, I am not abandoning this channel at all. Violent Rory Book Reviews will still be my main channel, but I'm going to have to split my time between Ghost Gaming and this. So, if you see weird gaps between videos on this channel, please do not be alarmed. I am not abandoning this. I'm just going to have to figure out a schedule that will allow me to work on both channels at the same time. So, please be patient while I figure that out. Alright everyone, have a great day and don't forget, keep on reading.